An individual who breaks a law that conscience tells him is unjust and who willingly accepts the penalty of imprisonment in order to arouse the conscience of the community over its injustice is in reality expressing the highest respect for the law. And that quote comes from Martin Luther King Jr. Welcome to Surviving the Matrix, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Maxwell Egan. It's a pleasure to be with you once again. And I'll be your host for the next hour. Well, what is law, folks? What is law and what is statute law? And where does it all come from? And how did we get into the position that we are in today, where we are subject to all of these statutes and ridiculous pieces of legislation that are enacted by our governments? And what is the purpose of all this stuff, folks? I actually believe that the purpose of it is to enslave society and to remove society from natural law and that seems to be very much what's happening there are a lot of people out there in the world today that are looking into the law and and the veil of secrecy seems to be falling away and people are beginning to realize what's actually going on in our court and legal system there are many people that have been down different rabbit holes in an attempt to find out exactly what's going on. I've done so myself. We have like the free man movement. We have people looking into sovereignty. We have people looking into constitutional law. And what we are discovering is that once you have gone down all these different avenues and become lost in all the different rabbit holes that are available to you, what you find is the highest harmonic of all law and that is what is known as trust law. And folks, trust law is actually what is being carried out around the world today in all of our legal systems, and we have never really been made aware of it. But once you do become aware that the basis of our entire legal system lies in trust law, and you gain a basic understanding of trust law, you find that it is in trust law that the remedy lies the remedy to all of the problems that we face. And when you really do begin to adjust your perspective of things, what you find is that trust law is not really that difficult to get your head around. And there have been quite a large number of people that have been appearing online lately that have been presenting their perspective of trust law. And one that I found quite recently, which laid it all out very clearly in the most simplest of terms, was a man from Canada by the name of Dean Clifford. And so I've got Dean as a guest on the show today because I think what Dean brings to the table is very worth listening to. We've got a lot to cover today, and so without further ado, we may as well get straight into the conversation. And so, Dean Clifford, welcome to the show. Good to, good to be here, Max. You've made uh, a really big impact with the videos that you put out on YouTube, which has put a, a very very clear understanding of trust law in people's minds. You've explained it in a very simplistic way. You've been able to uh, identify with corporate law, which is a really, really great way of doing it and how it all relates back to the Holy Trinity. And it's, it's, it's ridiculously simple when you look at it in the way that you presented it. And that, that's a really great thing, I think. And so congratulations on that. And it's, it's really nice to talk to you. What actually started you on this path? where you just, you found out all this stuff and, and saw what was going on? Well, I think the beginning is like a lot of people out there when you have your first bad run-in with uh, in Canada, especially uh, with Canada Revenue Agency, and that would have been about 15 years ago for me now. Uh, maybe a little more than that, actually. I think 16, yeah, 16 years ago when I, when I uh, first started a company there just doing some work around Winnipeg and whatnot, and I had my first bad run-in with CA, uh, CRA and... That turned into a four-year running battle with them where I had no idea what was going on. And then you start doing the research online and you start learning a little bit here and there and you, you come to your first realization that uh, the name on the birth certificate is not you. And, you know, I think I think you have your first epiphany at that point when you understand the implications of all this. And that turns into another 10 years of reading and research and uh, higher, higher education, I guess you could call it, where you're just 
absorbing every piece of information you can get online and you're going sifting through the nonsense and uh, trying to trying to see what makes sense to you before you uh, get the big picture, which I guess we have done in the last couple of years here finally, got it all together and now we're all about getting the information out there to people, making it as simple as possible, simple for the masses, simple for anybody to be able to understand uh, so that everybody can start kind of taking control of their lives here and uh, start administrating for themselves. Well, yeah, there is an awful lot of disinformation out there regarding this stuff as well. I mean, I've been down a lot of the rabbit holes myself, went down, looked at all the free man stuff, looked at the constitutional stuff, um, started getting into the trust law. When you start getting into trust law and you, you start gaining a, a real understanding of the power of equity, it, it really is an eye-opener. But even in that, there is a lot of disinformation out there. There's a lot of really complicated explanations out there of how this works and that's what i like about um, what you've done you've, you've just simplified it brilliantly oh, i appreciate that um i think that's a big part of it too is like you said is they uh uh geez i just had a thought there and i kind of lost it but uh, to do with uh when you get into the arguments uh with with the with the, the people here the courts and whatnot and the whole point is to keep things simple and the, the point of everything they're doing is to try to keep you arguing and keep you confused well, also, if, if you're arguing in court, then how much power are you demonstrating that you have? Uh, if you... um, you're being subservient if you're arguing in court. Exactly, exactly. That's what I'm saying. I mean, if you have established yourself as the sole holder of yourself, the sole shareholder of yourself and the, and the, the administrator of your own trust, if you will, then you're not there to argue, you're there to set policy. If you're the head of a corporation, you don't go to work to argue with your employees, you go to work to tell them what, what you want done. So yeah. there's well, no point in arguing. No, yeah, the, them keeping you there and arguing is no different than being at like a garage sale where you're up at the table and you find an interesting item and you ask how much and they tell you, you know, and then you say, no, I'm not interested, but you stand there and talk with them for the next 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So just by arguing in court, that, that's why... A lot of people are learning this stuff, and they're wanting to go to court, and they're wanting to argue with the judges. You know, I'm going to go to court, and I'm going to stand there, and I'm going to tell the judge that he has no jurisdiction over me, and I'm not, I'm not subject to his authority. And the judge is looking at you, going, "Well, if if you're not under my jurisdiction, what are you doing in my court?" <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, so I mean, you've you've shown yourself to be incompetent even by being there and thinking that you have to argue with this guy. Yeah. Um, the only argument I can make to the contrary on that is uh, me, like many other people, we've been in the situation where we really had no choice because uh, they, they actually come and they physically beat you up at some point to bring you there. Oh, yeah, yeah. But at that point, uh, it gets really simple because I think I covered that in one of the videos where people don't understand the fact that you, you have to get everything that ever happens to you on the record, which means if you're being beaten and physically harmed to show up there, then you better be swearing out an affidavit of that and putting it into the court file, or that better be the first thing out of your mouth after you say, I'm convening a court of record, and I was physically beaten until I showed up here today. Yeah, yeah, well, that's a different thing. I mean, obviously, if you're arrested and dragged into the court, then you've, you've got to establish your authority from that point, you know, and, and you know, don't offer a plea, establish yourself as the administrator of the account. And, Absolutely. And, and do it from that, that point. That's if you're dragged physically in there. But if you sent a summons to go to court and you think, okay, well, I'm going to, I'm going to get this summons and I'm going to go and I'm going to challenge their jurisdiction. Well, for, you know, for a start, you can't challenge their jurisdiction in their court. And, and there's no point going there and claiming that they have no, no jurisdiction over you because you went down there willingly. What, yep. are you, what are you doing there if they've got no jurisdiction? And like you say, it is different if they drag you in. And not only that, but your problem isn't with the court anyways. Your problem was with the person who brought you there. Yeah, exactly. And that would be the Crown in Australia and Canada, and that would be the state prosecutor in the United States. Your problem isn't with the court yet. Your problem was with the guy who brought the charge to the court claiming to have jurisdiction over you. That's your problem. Yeah, that's something a lot of people are missing in the whole thing, I think. And it's a, it's a, it's a different way of looking at it, but I've often said there's no point trying to fight the system. The system's got bigger teeth. What you have to do is realize the system is fictional, and how to disconnect yourself from the system. And knowing how it works, and knowing how the corporate structure works, and knowing that what they're doing in court is actually performing trust law, but they're not telling you about it, it is incredibly empowering. And that is your way out. And the way out, is, again, is in your birth certificate. There's a lot of people who are very, very scared of the birth certificate. There's even movements that are, that are looking into equity and trust law, 
that understand that what they're doing in the courts is trust law, understanding it goes way back to the church, it goes back to the Vatican. This is a, another big, huge rabbit hole. If you look at the, the three trusts that have actually been set up to deal with your birth certificate and your legal person, yeah, that, that's a whole other rabbit hole to go down. But there's people that are actually going out there and they're taking steps to create their own birth certificate and all this sort of stuff and to, to completely remove themselves from the trust agreement they have from the government. But really, the birth certificate actually gives you the power to hold the government accountable for their actions. So why would you want to dissolve that trust? Because if you do, it just leaves them to run riot. They can just do what they want. Okay, you're not part of the system, but we're still going to do this and we're still going to trash the rest of the world. We're still going to go and have all these illegal wars and you don't have any say about it because you've removed yourself from the arrangement. Yeah, and right now you've got the biggest say because you are the one who put the equity into the legal person. So the birth certificate becomes your receipt for the equity. And if you, if you don't want to learn trust law and you find it too complicated and you don't just want to get into the argument and that all this stuff scares you, you're not somebody that handles you know, situations where you're being confronted, especially in court, very well, then you can simply just maintain the position of, of, of the uh, equity holder, the, the investor in the, in the corporation. And when you show up in court, you can just say, hey, I'm just here because I'm the investor slash beneficiary. That's it. I've got the receipt right here. Um, my... my my, my duty, my obligation to this government started with me investing my share of the Commonwealth in it, and it ended with that action. I'm not compelled to do anything beyond that. And if anybody's claiming I am, I'd like to see them produce the contract or produce the law or produce the agreement. Produce whatever you want. You can simplify that in your argument, but uh, that's a position of authority. I'm the investor. You guys wouldn't – there'd be nothing without me. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So that's why you want to um, you want to really look at your birth certificate in a different light. You shouldn't fear this thing like like people are doing. And if they do decide to uh, remove themselves from that birth certificate and create their own, then they they are removing uh, any say they have over the, over the actions of the government. And this is is not the way to help things. I don't think. I think we we need to be able to use this system to be able to change the direction that our governments are going in because they're not going in a very good direction. And they're, they're doing what they're doing because we've never taken this responsibility ourselves. We've never really realised that we are the ones in the driver's seat and, and stood in that power and, and, and actually driven the ship ourselves. Yeah, I think uh, the only problem uh, at this point now with our governments and with the uh, the bank and the IMF and the whole nine yards, I think the vessel that we're going to try to take control of is the Titanic after it hit the iceberg. Well, yeah, yeah. So at, <laughs> at this point, I don't think there's much chance, much, much, uh, much, much to do in actually taking control of the ship and trying to steer it. I mean, we may make it go another direction for a couple minutes, but uh, she's going down. That that much is sure at this point. So. Um, <laughs> I think the best thing for people to do, and I think we spoke about that previously in one of our conversations, is to uh, is, is to get into the whole right back to roots, right back to basics and community again, and uh, and realize that you're you know everybody thinks that they're going to learn uh, accepted for value, and they're going to learn all this stuff, and then they're going to make the government uh, you know uh, take these checks or take these 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 vouchers, and they're going to make them settle the accounts. You're not going to do anything of the sort. The system was created for them, for their benefit. They just shut us down on a whim. If you're not in the old boys club, none of this stuff is going to work for us. It never will. It wasn't created for our benefit. Uh, I mean, technically speaking, yes, that's what the, the idea was. But no, obviously, we know that this, this whole system just exists to take our energy and give it straight to the bankers. So the more energy we give it, whether it's positive or negative, whether we're just giving it the money they want or we're fighting them, they're still going to get our energy. They're still going to get it, and that's expressed in the dollars we make. It's expressed with whatever property they take. So the best bet now is just getting out altogether, I think. Absolutely, non-compliance. That's what I've been saying for three years, Dean, and that's what's so beautiful about the way you presented this because I've been telling people that they're free and that the way to beat the system is to stop complying with it to simply disengage from it because you can't fight it, it's got bigger teeth you simply disconnect from it and I've been telling them that they're free and now you've got this very simple diagram which says, and look, I can prove that you're free and you've got this birth certificate which also proves that you're free you've just got to shift your perspective on how you look at things and that's why it was so great to find your work I've been spreading it with 
to as many people as I can. So you should be getting lots of views on that by now. Oh, yeah, no, I appreciate that. It was uh, unexpected. I think I told you previously as well, I mean, the, the, the videos that have been taken so far, especially the first one, was just uh, something that was recorded privately by one of the guys that comes to the meetings we just started giving, uh, just so he could go home and watch it himself uh, a couple of times, just to make sure he got all the information uh, through his head. And then next thing you know, they're asking me if we should post a couple on YouTube, and, you know, bam, five weeks later, there's uh, 70, 75,000 uh, combined uh, views on the, some of the videos that are on that, that, that site there. So it's, it's, it's amazing. I didn't know people were this starving for information, to be honest.